us begin. In the name of our loving God, Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Thank you. So I just invite you to take a deep breath. Let go of any worries. Just relax. Feel God with you right now. Know that you're not alone. Just let God spirit fill you, give you new life, new breath, new strength, and know how deeply God loves you. May our loving God have mercy on us, fill us with everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, we love you so much. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for bringing us together to worship you, to listen to your message, to be filled up by you. As we listen to the word of God, we pray through Christ our Lord. Good morning. Happy Easter, everyone. A reading from the Act of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, and after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. God raised him on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of God. Good morning. Happy Easter. The responsorial psalm is, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare God's work. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The second reading from Colossians 3, 1, 4. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above. Where Christ is seated, the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, with Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. This is the word of God. Happy Easter, everyone. 
May God be with you. Thank you. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, and the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. Very early, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had already been rolled back, and it was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. Then they went out and fled from the tomb, seized with trembling and bewilderment. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions who were mourning and weeping, and when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a writer from Uruguay, his name is Eduardo Galeano, and he writes about the prisons in Uruguay. He wrote, there was a special prison in Uruguay for political prisoners. Here they were not allowed to talk without permission. They were not allowed to whistle, smile, sing, walk fast, or greet other prisoners. Nor could they make or receive drawings of pregnant women, couples, butterflies, stars, or birds. One Sunday afternoon, Didaco Perez, a school teacher who was tortured and jailed for having ideological ideas, is visited by his five-year-old daughter, Malay. She brings him a drawing of birds. The guards destroy it at the entrance of the jail. On the following Sunday, Malay brings her father a drawing of trees. Trees are not forbidden and the drawing gets through. Her father praises her artwork and asks her about the colored circles scattered in the treetops, half hidden among the branches. Are they oranges, he asks. What fruit is it? The child puts her finger to her mouth. Shh. And she whispers in her father's ear, Don't you see? They are eyes. They're the eyes of the birds that I've smuggled in for you. (laughs) Despite the prison, despite the torture, the suffering, Malay is still able to bring the gift of birds to her father. She is not afraid to visit the prison, to sneak past the guards, or to be in this dark place. 
Her heart is filled with the song of the birds, and it cannot be stopped. We have at Spiritus Christi a saying that we've had ever since we began our church, which is, you can cut back some of the flowers, but you can't hold back the spring. We really need to hear that right now, too, don't we? (laughs) You can cut back some of the flowers, but you cannot hold back the spring. And Jesus' love can also not be stopped. Even in his death, he loves the same way that he did in life. We know as we have walked through with him this Holy Week that Jesus was rejected, that he was beaten, that he was humiliated, ridiculed, and tortured. And yet, what were his responses to those things? He healed the ear of the soldier who tried to arrest him. He forgave the thief that hung on the cross next to him. He asked his disciple John to take care of his mother. He brought peace to Peter, who denied him, and he will offer his wounds to Thomas, who will doubt him. Jesus has only one defense, and that is love. He has nothing else, no sword, no rocks, no barricade. The Easter story today tells us that Mary Magdalene gets up while it's still dark to go to the tomb. Why while it's still dark? Because like Malay, she is not afraid of the dark. She is not afraid of the soldiers. She's not afraid of Pontius Pilate. She does not want to go home and hide under a blanket. She wants to be present to what is happening. The only desire in her heart is to be close to Jesus. So she is awake in the middle of the night, and she decides to get up and go to the tomb. And when she goes, she discovers that the huge stone has been rolled away and that the tomb is empty. Jesus is gone, or so it seems. But it is not long before Jesus will appear to her. Because she is there in the darkness. She is present to Jesus. This cycle of Easter comes in our lives again and again. A cycle where there are difficult parts of our lives, pain, despair, followed by confusion, and then a resurrection, a rising again, a waking, a new Easter, a new spring. Jesus comes to us at Easter Easter to show us how to rise again, how to pick ourselves up, how to remember that we are more than the difficulties in our lives. But sometimes we're not so sure about that. There's a Peanuts cartoon with Lucy talking to Charlie Brown, and Lucy says, I hate everything. I hate everybody. I hate the whole world. And Charlie Brown looks at Lucy and says, But Lucy, I thought you said you had inner peace. And Lucy replies, I do have inner peace, but I still have outer obnoxiousness. (laughs) Sometimes we know that deep within us, there is an inner peace, but we just can't get rid of the outer obnoxiousness. That's just covering everything up. And that outer obnoxiousness is a sign of our own fears, our own anxieties, and our own worries. And once we let go of those fears, the outer obnoxiousness falls away, and we discover that, yes, we do have inner peace. We do have love within us, and we can do more with it. We can love more. Easter is a time to remember who we are created to be, It takes courage to be present to the moment. It takes courage not to shut out the plea of those who are begging for help, not to dismiss the needs of those we love the most, and not to ignore the sadness in our own hearts and take time to heal. In the past few years, we have seen the suffering of hundreds of thousands of people around the world fleeing hatred, violence, and greed. The images and stories of pain and suffering are constant and sad and overwhelming. And many people want nothing to do with them. 
It was too painful to be present to them. They don't know what to do. They don't want to think about it. But there are other people who respond very differently. Instead of seeing the problem, they see a way that they can help, something that they can do, a gift that they can offer. Every week, a grandmother from our parish visits Nielsen House, our home for men coming out of prison. She spends the evening talking with the group of men, and they open their hearts and pour out their stories to her. Is she a therapist? Nope. Is she a counselor? No. She's a grandmother with a big heart. Every Monday, 40 volunteers descend upon the World of Inquiry School to tutor second graders in reading. This is radical work, providing an education, teaching children to read. Do you know how radical it is? Just ask Malala Yousafzai, the Pakistani young woman who was shot in the head by the Taliban for campaigning for the right for girls to go to school. This is an important ministry. Two weeks ago, we had a coffee hour here after church. It was put on by our Speaking from the Heart ministry, our ministry that teaches English to immigrants. But we did not provide the food. The immigrants provided the food. And so we had a huge banquet of food from Sudan and different places around the world, and food that they had stayed up all night preparing for us. They blessed us because they have been blessed by members of this community who reached out to them and said, How can I help? Can I teach you English? Can I drive you to an appointment? Can I help you find clothes for your children? How can I help? And one of my favorite stories of someone who is using his gift is a story from of Bruno Caterina. Bruno is from my home state, California. He is a celebrity chef. He runs a restaurant in Los Angeles. And in 2005, his mother, Caterina, came to visit him from Italy. She saw the restaurant and said, let's go for a walk. So they walked down the street, and they passed a homeless shelter. And she said to her son, Bruno, let's go in. So they went in the shelter, and she saw a six-year-old boy eating potato chips for dinner. She said, Bruno, why is he eating potato chips for dinner? He said, I don't know, Mom. She said, well, get him some pasta. (laughs) So Bruno went back to the restaurant, came back with pasta for everybody. And that began... Bruno's making pasta for the motel kids, kids that loved and lived in motels. He began by making pasta for 72 children five nights a week. Now he feeds 17,900 children a week, a huge program. Bruno just used his gift. He knows how to cook. And With his mother's urging, he's making that pasta. (laughs) Who are these angels? They are Easter people, people that have risen above the fear of the dark, the fear of the unknown, the fear of themselves, and as they rise up, their ability to love grows and grows. We also are Easter people. We have the ability to love to let our love grow stronger and deeper for our families and our friends and the people around us. All we need is what we have now. This is just about being exactly who you are. I think children understand Easter the best of all of us. They understand God's joy and God's presence, even when they are suffering. After the World War II concentration camps were freed, and people went into the barracks to see where children had stayed. They discovered that on the walls there were thousands of pictures of caterpillars, chrysalises, and butterflies that the children had drawn. Pictures of caterpillars turning into butterflies endlessly repeated over and over. Somehow these children knew that their suffering was not the end of the story. 
They knew that there was more to come, and so they drew pictures of it. Children are very close to God. I have the great privilege of being a grandmother to a four-year-old grandson, Jace, and a ten-month-old granddaughter, Julia. If you didn't know that and haven't seen their pictures, after Mass, I will be right out here. (laughs) Recently, I brought Julia to a meeting at Spiritus. I watch her on Wednesdays, and Mom had to work late. So along she came with me to a meeting of about ten people. She's at an age where she's very shy and uneasy with strangers. But for an hour and a half, she sat quietly at my feet and in my lap, content to be in a room of strangers if I was close enough for her to reach out and touch me. Julia knows that she doesn't have to be any different than she is for she already knows that she is perfect to me. If she sleeps, she is perfect. If she cries, she is perfect. If she talks, she is perfect. If she falls asleep, she is perfect. She is a little God beam, and nothing that happens, nothing she does or doesn't do, can change that. Both Jace and Julia our little God beams. And that is an Easter reminder for all of us. For each one of us is truly a God beam. We sit at the feet of God, and we are God's beloved children. We sometimes forget that as we get older. We cover it up, or we're afraid to show it. Or perhaps we're worried that maybe our light will not be bright enough to shine through the darkness. Perhaps we're concerned that we've done something wrong. But Jesus is here to tell you that you are a God beam and that God's love is already in you and shining through you. So he says to us today, rise up in your love. Rise up in your dreams. Rise up in your hopes. You are free to love again, even if you have been rejected. You are free to trust again, even if you have been betrayed. You are free to care again, even if you have been hurt. You are not alone. You are sitting at the feet of God, and God is with you, always. The disciples were in despair when Jesus died. They were in a tomb of hopelessness, but Jesus transformed them from a band of broken men and women to a group of daring missionaries ready to heal the world. Everywhere they went, they carried the power of Easter to work miracles in people's lives. It is not just Jesus that rises on Easter. It is all of us. Jesus comes to give us everything that God gave to him, to remind us that we are pure love, to show us that we can build a world where love triumphs over death, where faith heals broken hearts, and where the least can become the greatest. Today we can take the risk to roll the stone away, to leave our fears behind, and to let the love begin. Happy Easter, everyone. Every Easter, we have the opportunity to renew our baptismal promises to make our profession of faith We do this in churches all around the world today. So please stand for this. Please answer, I do, if you you agree with these statements about your faith. Do you believe in God who created this whole universe and who made us in God's image and likeness? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was born of Mary, who empowered the poor and challenged the power structures, and then was crucified, died, and was buried, but then rose to new life? Do you believe in God, who is the Holy Spirit, who continues to live in us and guide our lives every day? Do you believe what Jesus taught, that God is love and that God forgives everything we've ever done wrong and asks us to forgive each other? Do you believe that Jesus lived a life of nonviolence and asks us to be nonviolent with one another? Do you believe that Jesus came to bring good news to the poor 
and wants us to be generous with the poor around us. Do you believe that the way we treat one another is exactly the way we treat Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, and life everlasting? We're really blessed to have a faith that brings us here today. And now we're going to go through the congregation with uh, holy water. We're going to sprinkle the water, reminding us of our baptism. And as you feel the drops of water come on you, just uh, think of everything being washed away, all the bad stuff, all the faults, all the mistakes. And this is a brand new beginning, okay? So if you get uh, sprinkled more than once, it's probably because you need it.
now it's time to pray for people. Let's remember people that are spending today, Easter Sunday, in the hospital or in jail or in a nursing home or in a rehab. For people dealing with anxiety, depression, mental illness, addiction, people in Yemen and Syria, for President Trump. Who's on your mind? Who would you like to pray for? And now let's make an offering of ourselves. Get in touch with how you're feeling right now. What kind of a mood are you in? What are you worried about? And just give all that to God. Just trust in God. Blessed are you, loving God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which the earth has given and human hands prepared. They will become our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to our loving God. Thank you, God, for Easter. Thank you for the hope that we feel today. Thank you for the forgiveness. Thank you for letting us be able to leave everything behind and to reach out for new life. Thank you for your sacrifice. Jesus, thank you for everything that you've done for us, for giving everything away. And now we sing with all the saints in heaven this prayer. Dear God, you are so beautiful, you are so holy, you are so wonderful. Let us feel your holiness right now as you consecrate us to you, along with the gifts of bread and wine that come from this beautiful planet, and we become the living body of Christ. Before, he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted. He took the bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. God for bringing us together from so many different places, different backgrounds. We come from different religions, but we know that you love all of us exactly the same. Thanks for sending Jesus here to show us the love of God. He treated everybody with compassion, even the people that put the nails on his hands and feet. He loved them. Even the people that betrayed him and doubted him, he loved them. He didn't make judgments. He never condemned anybody. He forgave the thief. He forgave his executioners. He died with a peaceful heart. But that was not the end. He rose from the dead and gave us life that goes on forever. So today we just say thank you again. We give you this life-giving bread and the saving cup in memory of those acts of love. Thank you, God, for this moment right here, being able to stand in your presence one more time with all these beautiful people. We say a prayer for our churches. Help us to be beacons of hope for people. And bless the Jews who are celebrating Passover. Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, may we all work together and heal our world. 
Bless those who have died. Ralph Cudham's just lost his brother Jack and all the people we miss. And God, one day when we die, save us a place, along with Mary and Joseph, the prophets, Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Oscar Romero, all the great people who have done your will. And we will praise you in union with them and give you the glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, forever and ever. peace be with you. Thank you. Let's wish each other a happy Easter. <laughs> Friends, behold the Lamb of God who comes to us under these humble disguises. He's the one who loves us more than anybody else. What a great privilege it is to be invited to the table. Lord, you make me worthy to receive you, and by your word I am healed. This is a great moment right now, communion time. Everybody's welcome to the table. Nobody's left out. The Lord thinks we're wonderful. Matter of fact, the Lord looks at us the way Reverend Mary looks on her grandchildren. <laughs> we are perfect. Whether you're sleeping or whatever you're doing, <laughs> you are perfect. So everybody's welcome to the table. Please come up and accept this love and pass that love on to lots of people. After receiving the body of Christ, you can either dip in the blue cup, which has grape juice, or drink from the wine. And if you need a gluten-free host, they're available at the station here and the one in the balcony.
going to close out today with a song that I think a lot of you know. It is the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. So, if anyone knows this chorus and can pick up a, a copy of the sheet music and come join us, I invite you to come to the stage right now. I will leave the copies on the piano, and you can grab one and you come up. Thank <laughs> you.